Today is Friday, July 22nd. We'll describe the picture lawmakers painted of President Trump the day the Capitol was being attacked and a new bill making birth control pills a federal right, why it's unlikely to become law. Also, what to know about the first reported case of polio in the U.S. in nearly a decade. Plus, why a beloved type of butterfly is on the brink of extinction. The major changes coming to your Facebook and Instagram apps. And the Mega Millions jackpot grows again how much someone could win tonight. Those stories and more news to know next. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. Lawmakers investigating the Capitol riot focused their eighth public hearing on one chunk of time that, until now, we haven't heard much about. They honed in on about three hours, 187 minutes to be exact, on January 6th. That's how much time passed between former President Trump ending his speech at the rally and him recording a statement telling the mob to go home. So what happened in that time? Well, lawmakers explained that Trump was told the Capitol was under attack within 15 minutes of leaving the stage. From that point, several White House staffers say he went into the White House dining room to watch Fox News, check Twitter, and call senators to encourage them to put off certifying President Biden's victory. The committee heard from senior law enforcement officers, military leaders, and top government officials who said they didn't hear anything from President Trump while the Capitol was under attack. In one especially chilling moment, Americans heard what Secret Service agents were talking about over their radios as they were trying to get former Vice President Pence to safety. They made it clear they were worried about their own lives, too. A White House security official backed that up, saying Secret Service agents were screaming and asking others to say goodbye to their family members for them. Within minutes of that, President Trump tweeted that, quote, Mike Pence did not have the courage to do what should have been done. About two hours later, Trump sent out a video message that did tell rioters to go home. Soon after, he tweeted, quote, These are the things and events that happen when a sacred landslide election victory is so unceremoniously and viciously stripped away from great patriots. The committee also played outtakes from a speech the former president recorded the next day on January 7th. In the video of outtakes, you see him telling staffers he does not want to say that the election is over. In response to these hearings, Trump has said the committee's work is one-sided and political and that he has done nothing wrong. Yesterday's committee hearing was the last one of the summer, but the investigation is far from over. Lawmakers say they'll spend the next month collecting and reviewing more evidence. Then there will be more hearings in September. And eventually the committee will issue a report based on its findings. It turns out the federal government will not be able to enforce some of its recent immigration policies, at least not yet. The U.S. Supreme Court has decided to let the lower court's ruling to block those policies stand, at least until justices can really take up this case this fall. They're considering the guidelines that say immigration status alone should not be the basis of a decision to deport someone. That officers should not try to arrest farm workers, elderly people, and others, but instead that they should focus on immigrants who really pose a threat to national security and public safety, or people who have crossed the border recently. But Texas and Louisiana sued over those guidelines, saying they basically grant immunity to millions of non-citizens and put a strain on state resources. These arguments will be brought up to the high court in December. President Biden is in isolation this weekend, fighting off a case of COVID-19. This week, he tested positive for the first time, though he has been vaccinated and had two booster shots. The White House spokesperson says he's still able to carry out all of his duties while dealing with some mild symptoms. Biden is also being treated with an antiviral. He'll have to stay isolated for at least five days. And if he tests negative after that, he'll go back to his usual business. The U.S. House passed a bill to protect certain types of birth control on a federal level. Since Roe v. Wade was overturned, there are now concerns that other rulings could be in danger, too. So this bill would officially protect the right to buy and use contraception from any similar high court decision. We're talking about methods such as birth control pills, IUDs, and Plan B. Every Democrat and eight Republicans voted yes. 195 other Republicans voted no. Some of the GOP lawmakers who said no worried that it could open the door to more abortion access— Others said it could potentially force medical providers to offer birth control, even if that goes against their moral or religious beliefs. And since the Senate is more evenly split than the House between Democrats and Republicans, well, this bill will likely fail there. 
The coast-to-coast heat wave we told you about yesterday is only getting worse today and throughout the weekend. Heat alerts now span from Phoenix to Boston, and millions of Americans are dealing with triple-digit temperatures. That could even include Washington, D.C., that has not hit 100 degrees in six years. So D.C. and several other cities have issued heat emergencies. With that, cooling centers will be open and special field teams will go out to check on people. The extreme heat is also making some businesses change things up. Like in Texas, one livestock economist says farmers are selling off their cattle at a rate not seen in more than a decade. Texas has already gotten some of its highest temperatures on record this summer. And Dallas, Austin, and San Antonio are expected to stay at or above 100 degrees for at least the next week. All right, we have much more news for you still ahead. But first, a quick break for our sponsor, Rothy's. I used to think I had to choose between comfort and style when it comes to my shoes. That if I want my shoes to be comfortable, I should not expect to get any compliments that day. But thanks to Rothy's, that mindset has completely changed. I can wear my Rothy's all day long with zero blisters and pain. In fact, I then get the joy of chatting with people who stop to ask where I got them. Rothy's are known for their chic pointed toe flats. I have a black pair of those that I love, but that is just the beginning. They have tons of iconic head-turning designs in bright yet sophisticated colors. So it's just that much more amazing to also know that Rothy's takes sustainability to the next level. All of their products are knit with thread made from plastic water bottles. They've repurposed around 125 million water bottles so far. Your new favorite shoes are waiting. Discover the versatile styles you can wear absolutely anywhere and get $20 off your first purchase at rothys.com slash newsworthy. That's R-O-T-H-Y-S, rothys.com slash newsworthy for $20 off your first order. Monarch butterflies are closer to the brink of extinction, at least according to the International Union for Conservation of Nature. The IUCN added the migrating monarch butterfly to its endangered list, just two steps away from extinct. Experts point to climate change as a big factor, specifically pointing to droughts that slow the growth of milkweed, which monarch caterpillars depend on. They also blame an increase of wildfires and extreme weather events. Monarchs in the western U.S. are especially at risk. The population declined by an estimated 99.9% from as many as 10 million butterflies to fewer than 2,000 between the 1980s and last year. Still, there are signs of hope. One expert who led the monarch assessment pointed to people and organizations who are planting native milkweed and cutting back on pesticide use. It's the nation's first polio case in nearly a decade. New York health officials and the CDC confirmed it yesterday. The AP reports the patient has developed paralysis and is a young adult who lives in Rockland County. This patient had not been vaccinated for polio. Still, officials are trying to figure out exactly how the infection occurred and whether other people were exposed to the virus. The patient had not traveled, but did have a strain of the virus that comes from a type of vaccine that's not given in the United States. So it's believed someone who got it, likely in another country, spread it. Most Americans are vaccinated against polio, though, and officials say if you are, you don't need to worry. The risk is extremely low. But they're encouraging anyone who is not vaccinated to get up to date on their shots, especially kids. Amazon is making one of its largest acquisitions ever, helping to further the tech giant's presence in healthcare. Amazon says it'll acquire One Medical for about $3.9 billion. One Medical is a public company that operates a network of boutique primary care practices and also offers telemedicine services. It has more than 180 medical offices in 25 markets. And it works with thousands of companies to provide health benefits to employees. An Amazon exec said the company hopes to improve how people book appointments and make the overall experience of seeing the doctor easier. Amazon has already been involved in the healthcare space. It purchased PillPack in 2018 and used that to launch its own online pharmacy. There's also a telehealth service called Amazon Care and more. The Facebook app is getting a major makeover. Parent company Meta announced the changes, and it essentially makes Facebook look more like TikTok. It moves the most recent posts from friends and family to a different area called the Feeds tab. But the Home tab that you'll see when you first open Facebook leans on an algorithm to choose what videos you'll see, getting recommendations for new content and creators to follow. The changes are rolling out around the world over the next week. By the way, Meta-owned Instagram also announced a few changes this week. For example... Most videos uploaded on Instagram will now be Reels. 
Reels will now offer templates to use in the hopes of making it easier to create them. And there's a new dual feature that allows you to record using both the front and back camera of your phone at the same time. The Mega Millions grand prize for tonight's drawing is about $660 million. If someone wins, it'll become the nation's ninth largest jackpot. It's become so large because there hasn't been a winner in three months. But as I'm sure you know, the odds are not in your favor. You have a one in more than 302 million chance of winning. That's it for the main news today. So now it's time for Feel Good Friday, when we bring you one extra feel good or positive news story before the weekend. But first, a quick break for our sponsor, BetterHelp Online Therapy. How do you support a healthy brain? Maybe you play games like Wordle or learn a new language. Really, listening to this podcast every day helps as you learn what's going on in the world and think about new things and play along with Trivia Tuesday even. I also like finding even just five minutes a day to meditate and clear my mind. Another way that might help you have a healthy brain and mindset? Therapy. I found it helps to reduce my stress, helps me think clearly and calmly, and I tend to make better decisions when I've had the chance to talk about a situation and consider perspectives I wouldn't otherwise think about. If you're not sure how to get started, BetterHelp is an option that is all online. So you can communicate with your therapist in whatever way makes you the most comfortable. Video, phone, or even live chat-only therapy sessions. You don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. And you can get started quickly. You can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Our listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash newsworthy. That's better, H-E-L-P, betterhelp.com slash newsworthy. Okay, now back to Feel Good Friday. An Indiana man ran into a burning home and ultimately saved five people, including a six-year-old girl he jumped out of a second-floor window with. When Nick Bostic saw the flames earlier this month, he ran into the house and yelled to see if anyone was inside. An 18-year-old, along with two of her younger siblings and one of their friends she was babysitting, were able to follow him outside. But there was still a six-year-old nowhere to be found. So Bostic went back inside to search and eventually heard the child's cries. Because of smoke filling the home, they had no choice but to get out through a second-floor window. Bostic hurt his arm during this rescue, but now everyone is expected to be okay. But the story does not end there. People came together to make sure Bostic could cover his medical bills. A GoFundMe page had a goal of $100,000. Well, at last check, it had raised more than half a million dollars. All right, we will be back tomorrow with our special edition Saturday episode. You'll hear analysis from both a Republican and a Democratic political strategist about the impact, if any, of the January 6th hearings. Then join us again Monday for your next daily news roundup. For now, thank you so much for listening and have a great weekend. 